you need to back up your blog today or you could lose everything. And I'm not being dramatic or hyperbolic. This genuinely happens to people all the time and it is heartbreaking. I don't want you to lose all your hard work. So I'm going to show you a free method that is super simple to back up your WordPress website. And you can even do it on autopilot all the time. Now, what could happen that we would need to do that? Unfortunately, a lot of things. You could upload a new theme and there could be something corrupt in the file. You could upload a plugin, same issue, something could be corrupt. It could wipe things out or install a virus. You could have two plugins that have a major conflict and mess up your whole site. There's so many issues. You could even update to like the newest WordPress and then hate it and want to roll it back. <laughs> now there are plugins as well that roll things back, but many people don't know how to use them. So this is another option. Or you could be like Margaret Bourne and do everything right and still one little messed up file means that when you delete a staging site, unfortunately your actual site gets deleted too. Margaret shared all of this live in their Facebook group and it was one of the most anxiety inducing experiences of my life. And I have like clinical anxiety disorder. I get stressed over picking out cheese for tacos at the grocery store. <laughs> like I am not okay. And this messed me up. Margaret was sharing live what was happening with their site as they were unsure if they were even going to get it back. Now, luckily a good host meant that, yep, they were able to fix it in the end. And Margaret did have a backup, but unfortunately the backup had a corrupt issue as well. I am not meant, like, meaning to criticize Margaret here at all. Margaret did everything right. And it was a freak accident, but many people don't even take the precautions Margaret takes. Now I'm putting Margaret's uh, blog on screen right now. It says how I almost lost this blog tips for how to back up your WordPress website. I'm going to link this article in the description because I think it's a really good one to read and also just like learn about what happened with Margaret's site. And yeah, you just never want that to happen to you. Now to do this myth method, we just need three things. Number one, a blog, and it needs to be on WordPress. Number two, the updraft plus plugin. It is 100% free. You don't need to pay for it. And number three, a Google drive. Now, when you install the plugin, it's going to bring up this homepage that says like back up now and a big blue button. Don't press that yet. Okay. Leave that alone for a second. We want to go into settings first under settings. We're going to do a couple things. Now, if you're like me and you have a premium host, I use lyrical host. They back up my site every night for me, but I still do this because I've got trust issues. and <laughs> I want to make sure I have a backup. I always say, get a prenup while you still like each other. So you should also do a manual backup when things are still good. So I will manually come in and back up my sites once a month. When I'm not using the plugin, I delete it. Now, if you don't have a host that's doing regular backups for you, you're probably going to want to select a manual option unless you are way more diligent than I am and you will remember to do this regularly. So under the files backup schedule and the database backup schedule, you're going to want to select daily or weekly or fortnightly or monthly. Never select every few hours. You don't need it that often. I would recommend weekly or monthly, and it all depends on how often you're publishing and how many changes you're making on the regular, because we want to try and have the most up-to-date version of our site possible. I wouldn't really recommend daily. I just like that my host does it for me. Um, I would typically say weekly is about as much as I would do unless you're publishing like 20 posts every single day. Now, most of us aren't doing that, so we're fine. Then you're going to select how many scheduled backups to keep. I keep two personally, and that is the default. Um, that way you have like two older versions ready to go in case something's wrong with one of them. Now you're going to choose your remote storage and I select Google drive. So when you select a Google drive, you're going to scroll down. It's going to have this like Google drive folder, name it, whatever you want. If you have multiple sites, make it clear which site it is. Then you're going to sign in. Now the sign in will just take you to a general area. You sign in, follow the instructions, give it permissions. Good to go. And then this bright orange screen pops up. There's a button in the middle that says like complete setup. Just click that. It brings you back here, but this is super important. It's going to bring you back to the general backup slash restore page. You got to click back to settings. You got to scroll down and then save it. <laughs> and then you got to scroll back up and then um, come and click on the probably sorry, that was the wrong order. You come to settings, you come here, you click on Google drive. So it has like a blue background. Then you scroll down and you save it. Now there are other settings beneath this. We do not need any of them. The only one is if you want to like upgrade to premium and get an email every time it does this, you could do that. I don't do that. As for like which files um, to include, I include all my files because I want all of them, but you can choose less if for some reason you wanted less. Less, Jesus. <laughs> now I don't use any of the advanced tools. It literally says at the top, unless you have a problem, you can completely ignore everything here. 
So then you can just ignore it. That's what I do. I've never touched this. Now we'll go back to the backup slash restore area. And here we're going to click backup now, finally. <laughs> and what we want to make sure is happening, and you'll know if your Google Drive didn't connect for some reason, is that this third option needs to show up here. Send this backup to remote storage. If it didn't work for some reason, like maybe you didn't save it. Um, I've definitely done that before. Maybe it didn't authenticate properly. Just go back, redo it again. It'll otherwise say that like there is no option here and this button will be grayed out and you won't be able to click it. So we want to make sure the first three are checked. We want including your database, including your files, sending it to a remote storage. Then you can decide if you only want it to be deleted manually. That's like if you have, I don't know, the holy grail of backups. You never want it to get overwritten. I don't have that, so I've never needed to. Then we're going to click backup now and it's going to run this backup. It takes a moment and we just have to let it run for a second. Now, while it's running, I just want to kind of answer or preempt a question, I guess. Why are we not uploading it or backing up to our site? Well, your database has limits. Think of your database like a room that you're in. Okay, so you're in this room, maybe it's like a little closet sort of situation, and you're standing in it taking up about half the space of the room. Now, if suddenly you were nine months pregnant, you're taking up a lot more space in that room. And that's kind of what happens with a backup. It's a zip file or a compressed file of your entire database. So it's not like a whole other person, it's about half a person, I would say. And if you have two of them, that's even more. Now you got twins and you're huge in this room and you're like, oh goodness, there's no room now. That's kind of how this feels. And if you have a really good, th or a really good host, you're gonna be better off and you won't have as many issues. But there's definitely issues to having a database that is too heavy and too bulked down. We really wanna make sure that we are having like a streamlined system essentially. And so if we can offload something and put it somewhere else, put it in storage, I don't know, give birth to the baby, I guess <laughs> it's falling apart quickly. <laughs> um, you, can, you can do that and then put it in a Google Drive instead. So now this is finished running. Now I did two backups before or a backup before recording this and this one, just to show you the difference of what it's going to look like. So down here, it says backup date. It has the February 19th, 2024 at 430 with a little like Google drive icon. That's how we know it worked. And it went to the Google drive. Now the other one I put on the site itself and we can see it says how much disk server space is used by updraft plus it's about 500 megabytes being used. That's not terrible, but this is a really small site. And the problem is we don't want to get complacent early on. And unfortunately as well, if you're with more of a budget theme or budget, the I keep saying theme. If you're with more of a budget host like Bluehost, your database really like gets hindered quickly and you don't have a lot of room in it. So even then way better just to offload it somewhere else. Now, if we go to the Google Drive I made for this site, you'll see Updraft Plus, the folder is here. If we click into it, it has the backup of all the different things. So it has DB plugin or MU plugins, others, plugins, themes, uploads, uploads too. So it's got all the stuff here. Now, if you wanted to re-upload this to your site, you can come back to your Updraft Plus, and then rather than having to like import that or anything, down here it says restore. And you would just click restore and it's gonna migrate everything back over for you. And that's all you have to do. It was super simple and now you've got a backed up site. Now, if like me, you are doing this manually, I do delete the plugin in between. It doesn't take up a ton of space, but I do not like to have anything on my site that I am not actively using. If you are going to have it doing automatic backups, then you need to leave it on your site. Now that can cause minor speed issues, nothing crazy, um, but it has a tiny bit of space. Anything you add is going to add some space. So you also want to make sure that you are doing this in the most efficient way possible. And again, that's why we're putting it in a Google Drive. We want to try and offload um, as much as we can to make sure that we are not slowing down your site. So now you know how to back up your site. Your homework is to go and do this immediately. If you've not done this ever, do it today. If you have been getting lax with it, do it today. If you have a system set up where you do this regularly, I'm very proud of you and you probably don't need to watch this video. You probably already have it done. <laughs> so this is how you back up your site. Go do this please immediately. And if you'd like more information on how to run your blog, check out my other videos on my channel. I'm gonna have one on the screen for you right now. that You can check out um, to get some more information. 
I'm also going to have a little like picture of me where you guys can subscribe if you'd like to. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any um, questions or requests for future videos, pop them in the comments. It really makes me feel good to see like comments, even just saying like, hi, or I like this. Um, and if you would like this too, I don't know. I like YouTube. It's fun and positivity is nice. <laughs> have a good rest of your day and yeah, check out my next video on the screen.